Hey guys, it's July 3rd. We're out here in our bee yard. Uh, if you remember from the past video, we made some splits over a double screen board. And the reason we did that is we're wanting to establish another yard and grow it. We've got about eight or nine ready to go. Uh, the splits worked out really well. The grafts, the queens emerged. They came back and mated. They're laying, got a good looking pattern. So we're, we feel comfortable in going ahead and moving these bees and starting our yard. Um, it's real hot, so we're gonna move them after dark. We're gonna bring you along to show you how we do that. Uh, I'm not sure how the footage will be, because like I said, it will be dark, but we wanted to bring you along, give you an inside look at how we move our bees and splits and how we set up our new yards. Okay, guys, this is one of the colonies we split and, and made a split with. Plenty of bees for this time of year. I did throw them a little bit of pollen supplement on. As you can see, they've been eating it. Uh, they're gonna need a little bit of help there's no uh no kind of flow on right now so to speak so we're gonna feed these colonies we've already fed them one round we're gonna do it again but this is what we're working with taking on our taking to set up our new yard that's just the empty foundation i had an extra one in there but most of this is drone comb one of the issues you want to uh take care of and consider sorry the chickens out there making a lot of racket but small hive beetles this time of year is a real problem in our area and you don't want a whole lot of extra space in these boxes it may be better or more beneficial to do them in a nucleus colony and condense it down if you're worried about the hive beetles you know messing up your colony because um, they can they can slime one out pretty quickly if you can see they've got some of our feed stored a little bit of pollen stored in here nothing major to write home about on that but all colonies have to start somewhere right just want to give another give you another once over more feed in here a lot of feed not sure if you can see down in here there's eggs and larvae real bright white milky looking good good healthy looking larvae Same on this side. This queen's starting out really well. She's doing a good job. And there's not a ton of bees in this colony, so it's gonna take take her a while to kick off. She's not gonna lay and, and produce more than the colony can take care of. So it's depending on the bee power that she has to, to the amount that she can, the amount of brood she can rear. There's one of our good looking queens right there. She looks really good and she is laying up a storm. Now one good thing to keep in mind, we're gonna come back through here before this brood is capped and we're gonna hit it with oxalic acid vapor, vapor and hammer those mites. Before this colony, we're gonna treat mostly with Apigard this year and I'm not big on uh, hitting new splits with Apigard so we're gonna use a uh, oxalic acid on, on this one while they're broodless and, and then do a mite wash and see what we got and we may have to drop some apa var strips and if they grow big enough we'll, we'll still give them some apa apa uh, guard but this is what our splits are looking like and this is the bees that's going to establish our new yard uh it's about four miles away from here <laughs> So we're gonna bring you along and show it guys okay guys on this colony here they do have a queen uh, this is one of the ones we're wanting to move but I hadn't been able to find any eggs or evidence of a laying queen she's acting like she's mated she swelled up some and she's walking slower on the comb uh, but I just had I, I like to make sure she's laying before we move them to start a new yard just for the simple fact I don't want to make numerous trips back and forth this is our home yard and I don't want to have to drive out of the way to make sure a colony's clean right if I don't have to. It just takes a little bit of extra time and it, it costs us a little more money to drive out to them, especially with what gas costs right now. So we're trying to verify that she is laying. We know she she's in here because I saw her yesterday, but I just can't verify or hadn't been able to verify that there, she's mated for certain. So that's what we're doing. I'm looking for eggs. Um, in here I, I know she's in here but i don't know about what condition she's in and i don't want to have to 
it's a lot easier to introduce a cell here than transport it and drive it down to the road four or five miles so that's all we're doing on this one it's got a lot of good stores in it uh, a lot of pollen a lot of stored sugar syrup and I honestly think they were bringing in a little bit of nectar from some sources we don't really have a flow but I saw some some stuff for somebody's feeding a colony nearby and they're just taking advantage of it as you can see we gave them some pollen supplement also and it's uh, they're really consuming it pretty good right now I recommend anytime you're working bees to, to work the, the frame over the colony but it's a little tall for us these boxes that are on these stands is what we used for in our queen rearing operation uh, these are all breeding stock obviously we got to split over a double screen board here down here these are our uh, our cell builders and uh, support colony for our cell builders but I'm just ver trying to verify that we got a laying queen in here before we move this colony off. She's, a, she's been a lot slower to start than the rest of them. But sometimes that happens. Sometimes the weather's not favorable when she's ready to go out and mate. We did have some rain and things like that. more stores on this side they're, they're calm they're gentle they're walking they're not frantic they're, they're not loud that's indications that you do have a queen it just doesn't always mean that she's mated and ready to go and ready to take over a colony and what i'm looking for is i'm just looking for one or two little eggs down in these cells and it can be hard so a lot of times i have to get a flashlight out because my eyes aren't as good as they used to be and it's sometimes even hard to see in the bright sunlight especially when you're only hunting like one or two cells or uh, sorry eggs in the cell nothing i see nothing on that frame I'm going to gently turn it over. Still don't see any eggs in this one. And this queen looks almost like a worker bee. Her pattern's about the same. She's kind of hard to spot. anything on here I'm gonna say that she is probably mated just just by what I saw yesterday looking at her I can tell uh, she's swelling up like she's made I just don't think she started laying just yet and another reason I say that is I found an open cell I think we missed one that was already in here that that emerged later And I'm not real sure. I didn't. I, she doesn't look like what our queens generally look like. She looks like the stock we were using prior to what we're using now. But it's just hard to tell. I still see no eggs in here. I don't, I don't see anything. I don't even see her, but the colony looks good otherwise. So what we'll probably do is we will probably go ahead and take her. We're gonna start a new batch of cells today. And if they don't have any, you know, in a day or so, we'll give them a frame of brood just to keep laying work in if the instincts down. And when we get pull ourselves out of that cell builder, builder, <laughs> 
I've got I got an interesting story to tell you about that cell builder that happened yesterday and we're gonna have to I made a newbie mistake and we're gonna have to start all over uh, with those cells I'm gonna I'm gonna trash them I don't think they're gonna be any good and it's all my fault and I'll explain that to you here in just a second another good tip is always make your Make your boxes where you can work them with ease. This is too high for me to work comfortably. But when we're putting them over, we're splitting over these double screen boards, a lot of times it's it's hard to, especially on stands, that's why we like them near the ground. But on the ground has its own set of uh, problems too with pests and things. So to each their own, here's a dragonfly. They can wreak havoc on our, on our uh, queen rearing operations. But, Let's go down here to this cell builder. I explained it to you what happened yesterday. Okay, guys, I was telling you about our boo boo cell builder. Yesterday, what happened was I was wearing a regular veil. I was just going to take a quick peek in here, see if they had accepted most of our cells. And it was late in the afternoon. I didn't have a smoker with me or anything. And I didn't, I didn't tie my veil off. I took about six things to the head and the side of the face. And I had my cell frame and my, my uh, grass in my hand while I dropped them. And I took off running to get rid of the bees because they was tearing me up. And uh, they may would be okay, but I got a good feeling most of them was probably knocked or jarred loose from the royal jelly, the base of the cup. So it's just as we could probably try to use them and see what happened, but it's only going to set us a day behind. So we're going to regraft, and I'll show you the, the cells in here. Keep in mind it's easier to raise queens uh, in a time of plenty. And what I mean by that is a good strong pollen and nectar flow. The bees are more readily to, to raise queens then than they are in the dirt. So we're feeding these bees heavily and we've got pollen supplement on them. Uh, we try to give them everything they need to, to make sure these cells get off to a good start. And I'm just pulling the cell bar out now. I just want to see. Well, it looks like they're still working all the cups. That's, <laughs> I hate to <laughs> tear these off because I mean, that's near 100% take, from what I can tell, anyway. One out of 30 didn't take. And man, I dropped this daggum cell phone. I think we're going to do an experiment with this and just wait and see what happens. I'm going to put them back in. Real gently. I'm going to put this pollen supplement back over the top of them. I keep that right over top of the frame. Man, what? I don't know. I don't know what to do, guys. I mean, risk it and regraft. Those cells look great. The pool of royal jelly was great. It's getting later in the season for us. It's going to be harder to make queens. So leave it in the comments. Have you ever dropped your uh, cell frame and did it work? So I think we're going to try it and see. And uh, we don't have to have these queens right now. We're just using them to requeen colonies and make a few additional splits. So we're going to see what they do. See how they look when they emerge. Put this back together. This here is my queen right portion of the uh, builder, and this is just a frame of food on top.
Okay guys, so the weather came in on us. I know it's not quite dark, but it did cool off a good bit. So what we're doing is we're loading up bees to go to the new yard, the, the splits we made, and we're gonna uh, take those and get them started. All I'm doing, this was the split we made over a double screen board, so I'm gonna take it off. There's a lot of bees there, but that's okay. You're not gonna get all of them this way. You're not going to get all the bees when you move them, especially during daylight hours anyway. So we're going to take these colonies that's on the truck here, and these are going to be the start of our new bee yard. At our new location, you got one of those screens. I think we've got eight in here on pallets. So we're gonna we're gonna get these started. Go down there. And we'll bring you along. We'll show you the new bee yard. We didn't bring a lid for that colony, but we've got a wheat colony here. We're gonna go ahead and put it over a double screen board. This one here is wheat. But it is queen right. So we're gonna put it over the double screen board down here, just because we didn't bring a lid. Yeah, we forgot a lid, so we're going to have to improvise a little bit. We're going to take this. Check for the queen. She's marked, so she's easy to find. She's not on here. We're going to give this colony a, a boost. And any foragers coming back will also boost this colony. Just like so. Like I said, they're pretty weak. But they're queen right. We'll probably end up putting these in a nuke box and going from there. But just want to bring you along with us. We'll take you to the next bee yard show yet. Guys, it's real important when you're moving bees to give them as much room for ventilation as possible so they don't overheat. Bees can overheat in a real hurry. We've got these boxes separated out as far as we can. And we're just going to strap these down. Just like so. We're going to close it up. And we're going to go on to the next bee yard. Just always check your lids. Check your boxes. These pallets make it a lot easier to move them. So, uh... Like I said, we're, we got eight we're going to start the new new yard with, and uh, we got it bush hogged this week and got it ready, got it set up. It's a lot of work moving bees, even this small amount of bees is getting ready for it and getting the move done. Takes about all day, so thanks thanks for watching. We'll see you at the, the new yard. Well, guys, we're on the way out to the, the next yard. Um, bee yard security is pretty, pretty important to us. We try to keep them off the beaten path as you can see uh, at the road there's a there's a gate a cable gate with a lock on it and if you don't know the property you're not even going to know the bees are out here the way we've got it laid out so that's real important to us we like to keep our bees uh, out of out of sight as much as possible just to avoid vandalism and theft uh, it's a real thing it happens um, I've had I had 20 something hives stolen several years ago and that it's a lot of money, guys, to, to have. We didn't have insurance on our bees at the time, and that can be a lot of money to have um, to have to replace all those boxes and the bees. So keep in mind, you know, a, a safe bee yard's uh, not visible to the public most of the time. So keep that in mind. And also, uh, I know I know you see the power lines, the high transmission lines. I spoke to a lot of other beekeepers that keep their uh bees on power lines uh, never had an issue i even watched a video bob benny has some a yard on a, a power line so 
this is our first on a power line so we're going to kind of have to see how it goes but i'm not anticipating any issues at all with, with the power or anything like that i know a lot of people say it can interfere with the way the bees navigate and fly and communicate and things like that but i'm not 100 percent sure it'll be a problem so yeah like i was saying guys i'm not 100 percent sure that the power lines have any effect on bees or not um, but i'm gonna I'm, we're gonna try it as you can see look if you look right here it's it's kind of out in the middle of nowhere uh, a little more extra work with the bush hog to get it ready and get it cleaned up and get get it ready to put your bee yard in but uh, there's a lot of forage out here a lot of blackberries and things like that um, we have high hopes for this yard but we want to uh, make sure that they're going to do good and be out of, the, out of sight as much as possible. The bee crew is out here working extra hard today. We didn't hook up the trailer and the loader for these eight. That's more trouble than it's worth, so we'll just pick them up by hand. We stole these two-way pallet ideas from Ann Stepler, and they work great for our hives because we're not migratory yet. Um, but we are starting to build a lot of four-way pallets just in, just for when we get ready to start moving moving bees for pollination. We do a little bit of pollination, small scale, but nothing major. So like I said, we brought eight to start this yard with, and we'll end up going with about nine, or sorry, about 20 to 30 in this yard. It's pretty secluded out in the middle of nowhere you can hear the power in these lines so we'll know shortly if it affects bees or not if you've ever had issues with it go ahead and put that in the comments below but i'm, I'm fairly certain there's not any issues with it from everybody i've talked to and uh, watched the video that bob benny did and he said he's had bees out there and it didn't cause any issues or not with anything so this is basically how we set up a new yard guys we go through and bush hog it and get it ready then we either move our hives back out with the loader or um, by hand like this and until we get to the numbers we want. The hardest part is getting the hives level for the most part, especially with these pallets. We try to get them level and set perfect, but it's nearly impossible. You just don't, we like to keep the entrance running down so the water drains out pretty good, but we do have drain holes in our pallets. So we do the best we can do and that's all we can do. Well, guys, I'm sure these bees are not going to be too happy. They've been moved around. Actually, they're not too bad. They didn't come bowling out on us like I thought they would. Um, we're going to open them up here in just a second, but we don't have any sugar water made up right now. Like I said, we've been on vacation, and we hadn't really started feeding in earnest because we left a little more food on them. But I am going to give these colonies a, a sugar block just to get them by. They've got a lot of... Uh, stores in these combs, but I just want them to have a little bit more because it might be a week or two before we can get back over here and get them fed up good. Always check for your queen on top. And what we're doing is we're just using an inch and a half spacer rim to do this. We use these for a lot of stuff. Uh -huh. If you don't have any, make you some of these up. They, can, they come in real handy. From everything from Paramount to pollen patties to uh, treating with apigard. We, we use these a lot. Same thing with this colony. They're not real happy, I'm sure. But like I said, we don't have any sugar water really made up yet. It'll be a, it'll be a little while before we can have any made up now. We didn't bring a smoker either, which was a bad idea. But we didn't. So we're just going to have to be gentle setting this down and kind of wiggle it until the bees get out of the way. There's some burr comb that we're using to put it on. And that'll help keep from crushing bees. I'm not sure if you can see it in the camera, but there's a piece of burr comb. We're just going to set it up just like that. We're going to close it up. Anytime you move bees or anything like that, it's, their stress level is real high on them and it's good to give them something to chew on as far as uh, sugar water or something to eat. And it really just helps them settle in a little easier.
And what he's doing, he's just uh, we screen them off the uh, best we can before we move them. He's just moving or pulling the screens out and letting them have free reign to the colony. It'll take them a few days to settle down and orient, and there'll be some drift issues, and one of these colonies will probably be stronger than the other one. It's just the way it always works. These will drift to one side. And it looks like they're already going to that box there, so, I mean, we may have to come back through and equalize or whatever, but we can do that. <laughs> Wear gloves when you're pulling these out, unless you're tougher than we are, because sometimes they'll come out and pop your hands real good. These are actually being pretty docile and gentle. None even came out of that one. It does have bees in it, I promise. But make sure that when you're, uh, when you're doing this that you double check and triple check, quadruple check to make sure you've removed all the screens because I don't know if it was just a one-time occurrence or not, but I, I screened one off completely for a robin issue and there could have been plenty of robber bees in there that killed the queen or they may have killed her queen, but I think I think a lot of times if they can't get out and forage and, and get access out of the box, even though they're ventilated and they can breathe a little bit, they, uh, they, they can ball the queen. And I've even noticed, I've seen them ball the queen just from transporting bees sometimes. So it's never a guarantee when you're moving bees around, but we have to move bees. And we're thankful for this yard because we're out of places to put bees. This will be our fifth yard. so. We're real happy to have it. Now, keep in mind, the property owner lets us use all this, and we're not paying, we're not leasing it or anything like that, and it's free, but we do have to keep coming here and take care of it, and that's a lot to take care of. So, I mean, we've got to be able to get the tractor in here, bring the tractor over here to clean clean up all this and keep it mowed and keep it accessible. So that's a small part that we pay, and we'll help the property owner do whatever he needs with our equipment just because He's allowing us a free bee yard, so it, go, it goes both ways, free hunting, free work, you know, we'll bush hog for them, do a little bit of tractor work here or there, whatever we can do to get the bee yard, that's what we do, but we typically don't have to pay anything. Well guys, we hope you enjoyed today's video, it's been a long day, we've been out, you know, getting these bees ready to move, and it's not a lot of bee movement, it's just several, but we had a lot to do today, we had to get paramoth on colony, or on the, on our drone comb and things like that just little things that add up to a full day uh, but we did get our bees moved out here we moved them a little earlier than we were going to we we're going to wait until dark and move them but i got to thinking there's rain and storms moving in and plus i wasn't sure you'd be able to see it in the video so we sacrificed a little bit of our foraging force and left them back in the home yard i'm sure so but they'll blend in with the other colonies and won't have any issues and these are still growing and we're going to get these nursed up we're going to add to this yard we're, we want our goal for this yard to be about 25 colonies so that's we're going to continue splitting like i said you saw the cell builder going today uh it's be, become a queen right cell finisher now we've swapped it over this evening and then in a day or so those will be going into the incubator and we'll, we'll be making more splits on top of that we'll bring you along i know it's been a while since we've been putting videos out but we have other obligations going on and it's something that i have to get done and it's not voluntary so just bear with us. We do have more beekeeping coming, and we hadn't forgot about you guys. We really appreciate you watching. If you enjoy the content, how about hitting the like button? And uh, if you hadn't subscribed, go ahead and subscribe to the channel because we do have a lot more uh, good content coming your way. So thanks for watching, and happy beekeeping.